And he said, well, you need to write a script. And so I pitched him three ideas, two of which were fairly typical standard romantic comedies, and, one, and the third of which was American Beauty. I think we should all be so lucky as to have an Uncle Frank in our lives, someone that introduces us to the world, that teaches us important lessons that we take with us the rest of our lives. You have obviously worked, all both of you, with such incredible talents in your life. I'm curious, who was the Uncle Frank of your career, the person that kind of sort of kind of taught you about different aspects of the business and taught you the lessons that you still take with you to this day? Uh, for me, it's my agent, Andrew Canava. Uh, when I when I moved to, uh, when, when I first started working with him, I said I, w I was working in television and sitcoms. And I said, I, want, I would like to transition to movies. And he said, well, you need to write a script. And so I pitched him three ideas, two of which were fairly typical standard romantic comedies. And, one, and the third of which was American Beauty, which was kind of hard to pitch because it's not really a, a, a high concept, one sentence pitch. And um, he said, that's the one you should write. Happy and 20th I, anniversary on that, by the way. Yeah. And I said, really, why? And he said, because that's obviously the one that you're the most passionate about. It was the best piece of advice I ever got. And uh, looking back, I, you know, I, I thank him for that. Stellan Skarsgård. What? Stellan Skarsgård and I were making a movie together. And he, I, I, I watched a movie with him in when he was, a, he was a very young man called The Simple Minded Murderer. And in it, there is a moment, he lives in a stable on a, on a, on a, on a, 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 a mansion, you know, estate. And he lives in the stable and his, um, the master of the house is a real bastard. And his sister has run away and she's come back as an actress from, I don't know, Stockholm or, or wherever it is. And she's pretending to be somebody different. And she walks into the stable with this guy and she's uh, the brother of the simple minded murderer played by St Stellan Skarsgård sees her and he goes to speak and she looks at him like, like this. And then Stellan does this thing where he, he just looked, he looked away and I burst into tears and I asked him about it the next day. And I said, how did you decide to do that? And he said, Paul, I was so scared. I didn't know what to do. So I turned my face away from the camera. And I thought the honesty, <laughs> story up, the honesty to tell a young actor that it was a happy accident. And, um, and you know, to, and he's also the man that told me and I say it all the time. The difference between theater acting and, uh, and film acting is that it's always a rehearsal and you must make mistakes. And um, uh, because, the, you know, and so, yeah, he is, he, he, he was my uh, career Uncle Frank. Me, uh, as for acting, um, uh, my mom helps me a lot with everything, but as for a an teacher, an acting teacher, uh, well, I, I went to acting school and uh, there was this one guy, like I learned a lot from each and every uh, teacher that I had. Uh, There's this one guy and I, I, I'm going to, it's like, it's, it's a, it's a name like Tim or Tom or something like that. Uh, his name, I can't recall now because it's, it's been so many years um, since that, but he, I, all I remember is that he, uh, he lived on the boat, lived on a boat and he, um, wrote me a really nice letter when I left acting, the acting school. And he, he taught me a lot. He taught me everything about film. He was my film teacher and he, uh, he's one of the sweetest, nicest guys I've ever met. And just working with him and being with him as a kid, uh, I feel really lucky to have that, to have someone to, to support me in this, in this and make me feel confident in, uh, in my ability to act is, uh, it's, it's something that you don't, really, it's, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to actually find. Um, but he really, he really, uh, I'm really lucky to have him in my life. I'd love to know what he, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming he is seeing the trailers for this and saw you in the it films. I'd love to know what he thinks of everything. Oh, right me now. too. Yeah. Um, well, you know, same thing. I mean, I've had a lot of acting gurus who were very supportive and encouraging and sort of, uh, you know, um, uh, taught me the craft, if you will. And, uh, you know, and for, as far as mentors, but, you know, you learn everything from everyone and everyday job. There's an Uncle Frank in some moment. I mean, you know, where you learn, you know, 
things that uh, never occurred to you in the past, you know? I was playing a teenager and was not much past being one or long, long ago. Melvin Douglas was my father in my first job, actually. Oh and uh, I, I did learn a lot from him. And wow, he was, was there anything in particular that stands out that you remember? Oh, one of my very favorite stories of my own self is I, I played a, a, a teenage girl who was going off to play Queen Victoria in the school play and Melvin and, and my father and mother were going to come. And on the last night of its Broadway run, and the, at, at, that was in the third act. And as I was, I said goodbye to them and I go out the door and he ad-libbed, she's gonna be a great actress, that kid. Isn't that a present? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm tearing. I know. Wow, yes. well, one of my favorite stories ever of my life. <gasps> Judy, what you got? Um, oh, I don't have anything now. I was gonna say something my choir teacher told me in high school. She said, when in doubt, sing loud. And that's something, <laughs> but it's not as good as Melvin Douglas telling you you're gonna be a great actress, but it has helped me. Obviously, both of you, uh, no stranger to the differences between television and film. Obviously, with television, you have the opportunity to flesh out a character over multiple episodes, hopefully multiple seasons. With the movie, you got to sort of squeeze it in with about two hours. Obviously, you know, Mr. Ball, you had television with, with Six Feet Under and, and, and Mr. Bettany, I can't wait to see WandaVision. I'm curious if you were able to explore Uncle Frank over multiple episodes or multiple seasons as you've gotten to do with other characters, what are aspects of that man that you would really love to be able to dive into if you had a little bit more time? Wow. Uh, I, would, uh, I would probably, you know, want to see what happens uh, once they all go back to New York. Is, does Beth become part of the surrogate family? Do Frank and Wally, uh, I don't know, adopt a child? I, I don't know. I, I never really thought about it because for, in my mind, it works. It, it sort of ends. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but if I were given the opportunity, those are the things I would look for. And, and also, how does his relationship with his family members from South Carolina evolve? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I, I mean, I, I really hear Alan on this, which is some stories present themselves as sort of three acts, you know, and some don't. And this feels very much a, a story told in, in three acts, and it feels uh, done and, 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 and dusted. But of course, it wouldn't be the end of the story and it is an interesting I mean it is an interesting idea to to, to to muse on where they would go together and whether it would you know work and 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 what happens um what happens to them in the 80s um would be also very interesting I think mean, and um uh but uh but yeah I'm with Alan it feels very much uh a beginning, middle, and an end story, and, I, yeah. and 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 I think when you try to do that in television, you can feel it. You can feel that you're somehow just retarding the 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 the, the plot wants to just run at the conclusion, and you're holding it back and going, "Well, why don't we look at what happened to them when they went to France for a year and a half?" <laughs> and uh, uh, it, it doesn't feel like it really fits television. This one. Well, there was a talk, like I can't reveal much about that to, you know, have maybe a TV show that would, you know, but but that was, I'm mean, forget that I said that, that was just okay. missing and it's not something that we'd like to do anyhow. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's just like, yeah, I never thought of that. Well, it would be, I think it'll be all over again, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I think I just hang out a lot at their place. Well, gentlemen, I, I can't tell you enough how much of an honor it is. Mr. Ball, it, what an honor to uh, Six Feet Under finale is the greatest television finale of all time. Really an honor. And Mr. Wow, Bettany, always you. a pleasure to chat with you, sir. Thank you for always being so kind to me, man. I hope to I hope we get to chat for WandaVision. What was that? Why wasn't I in it? That's a, what's a <laughs> wonderful question. I'm thinking reunion. <laughs> I'm so angry at you. First Joseph and now this. Oh. I know. Paul is really angry with me. He just wanted to see the flash to see, like, to see what his death scene would be at the, yeah, the final exactly. moments of the episode. <laughs>